Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. Before we get started with today's video, I just want to remind everybody you can become a member to the channel right here on eBuzz for just 99 cents a month. The MVP, VIP, and Pro versions are going to be weeded out by the end of the month, and all those perks will be transferred over to eBuzz Central. It's a great way to support the channel, and of course, a great way to support content that you like. Now, in some of my previous videos, I have brought up DistroWatch. One of the reasons I do this is because the distribution we're going to take a look at today had a new release six days ago, and it shows up nowhere on DistroWatch. And I truly believe it is a top 10 distribution. So if you go over here, let's go back, let's go to DistroWatch's main page, and when you pop it up, it shows you all the latest distributions over here, and then if you scroll up here, it kind of gives you a layout right here of what distributions have been recently released. And then if you come over here, it shows you what pages have been hit the most, and if you go through this list, you will not see the distro that I'm getting ready to cover. Now, the previous release of this distro I did a review on back in September, Got great feedback on it. A lot of people love it. Have people that tell me they love it better than Manjaro, and they definitely like it better than Garuda just because of the way it looks. And that would be Big Linux. When you talk about Big Linux, it's got a base of Manjaro. They don't hold uh, packages back, and it's a rolling release, and it just is very impressive. It's a Brazilian distribution, and if you come to their website, which is biglinux.com.br. I'll be sure to put that link in the description below. You kind of get a little bit of information about it. You can download it, solve in your needs. It even works without installing, which a lot of Linux distributions do. It goes over Office software, web apps, uh, online conversations with quality, games, remote access, restore points, thousands of programs, more space for your files, integration with your smartphone, stunning performance, it's free, it's always up to date, you can get it in 29 different languages, you can run Android apps inside of it, you can convert and resize it, multiple desktop configurations, and I know that is available on other distributions out there, I like the way it's integrated into Big Linux, but it makes things a little easier, so if you're somebody that has been like on a Manjaro, and you just don't like some of the quirks you get with Manjaro, Big Linux gets rid of all those issues for you. And then you can come down to the bottom. It shows supporters and then, of course, the main volunteers and frequently asked questions. Then if you go to the top, you've got download support, photos, videos, news, others, contribute, contact. And seeing how it does have a base of Manjaro, you're going to have an arch base, but it's a great distribution that I have been running on a backup laptop for a long time now. And I'm really, really impressed. Now, it did start off years ago, I believe, based on Kubuntu. Then it switched to Deepin. And then it switched over to Manjaro. But like I said, they have taken a lot of the quirks out of it. And it makes it easier. But like, you know, you go to DistroWatch. You got this great, great operating system that really gets no love. And if you go up here and you put in big and go do a search for it, the last time... They updated any information on it. It was 12-2 of 2022, which is over a month ago. And then if you scroll down, the most recent release it's going to show you is 2-7-2022. So they've had a couple releases since then. So that's one of the reasons I kind of tend to shy away from DistroWatch to get information on newer releases or distribution news in general. I usually have to do a lot of searching online, pin those websites to a favorites. That way I can always go get the information myself. So just be careful when you're using DistroWatch. It doesn't always give you the most recent information or give you the information on distros out there that are really making a difference. So what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to zip on down here to boxes because I've already got Big Linux open inside a virtual machine. And I'm going to pick my language, which is United States. And then I want to pick my layout. I'm going to go ahead and probably go with, I don't want to go with dark. I've had people in my video say, please leave it light so I can see what's going on. So I'm going to go with fluent. And then what kind of layout? I will probably just go with the classic, but you do have the K-Unity, the new, the next generation, which is kind of giving you a little bar in the middle, then your modern, and then of course your desk X, which will have looks like a latte doc. I'm going to go ahead and go with the classic and let that open up for us. 
I will have to adjust the resolution. I'm going to go ahead and go full screen up here. And then let's go ahead and come down here to settings. And let's look up settings real quick. So that way we can adjust the resolution. And we will put in display. And click on that. And come down here and adjust the resolution. So 1920 by 1080. Let's go ahead and apply that much better we can see that much better let's go ahead and close out of that and there's your desktop now if you download this throw it on a usb open it in a virtual machine this is pretty much what you're going to be taking a look at here let's go ahead and close that as you can see you've got one single panel down here you got a nice little background i do like the icon theme that they're using for this kind of gives you a, a light blue kind of a see-through I enjoy that. Let's go ahead and close out of that. First thing I want to point out is the control center. Let's go ahead and open that up. And when it opens up, it tells you good morning. And then you've got a lot of different things you can do right here from the control center. You've got control over themes, desktop and settings, restore the program configuration, and then of course system and hardware information. So if you wanted to change themes, you could just click on open. And it's going to bring up the nice little thing that you had at the beginning. You've got your themes. You've got your desktop. And then you've got your settings, performance mode, if you want it in performance mode, browser accelerations, brave configuration, choosing programs to load into memory during boot, and a couple different settings down here. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got restore your program configuration, system and hardware information. Let's go ahead and open that up. And then you can enter your password to generate a more complete report. Now, because I'm in a virtual machine, this is probably not going to give me all the info that I want. So I'm not going to really concern myself with it, but it's CPU, it's AMD Ryzen 7, RAM, I've got 4 gigs issued to it, and then videos, Red Hat Inc., QXL, Para Virtual Graphic Card, and then we can come down here, and it's got your system, installed on partition, partition size, space use, clear space, and then the kernel in use is 6.1.7-1 Manjaro. So we'll go ahead and close out of this, and then... You've got other stuff down here. You've got add and remove users, install drivers and firmware, install kernel versions, introduction to big Linux, monitors and screens, printers, restore installed system settings, snap drop, snapshots and backups, and then of course your sound and microphone. And then over here you've got network and internet, phone, Android Air More, Android application support, snap drop, KDE Connect. Then you've got customize. You've got your Kvanta manager and all that in here. Multimedia accounts, devices, your system itself. Now, if you wanted to open up a terminal, let's see if they have NeoFetch on here. And they do have NeoFetch, so let's go ahead and make that bigger. And also make it bigger so you can see it. And it shows you that you're on Big Linux. Uh, we've been up for nine minutes. How many packages you have from Pac-Man, Breeze, Terminal font. It's got the Ubuntu Terminal font. But that just gives you some base information there. So let's go ahead and close out of that. So if you download this to give it a test drive, please take a look at their control center. So let's close out of that. Now I want to right click, configure desktop and wallpaper. Let's see what kind of different wallpapers we have in here. You've got quite a few that are very beautiful. And not all of them are just your base KDE wallpapers. you got some that are darker like that. I kind of like that. I think I'll leave that up there. Close out of that. Apply it. And I'm going to right click down here. Configure task manager. You can change things up down here for your task manager. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. It's KDE. Everybody's pretty familiar with it. Now, you do have a single panel down here. You've got your date and time. Then, of course, you've got your hidden icons that have a lot of different applications in here. Everything from notifications all the way to KDE Connect. USB, internet, sound, and of course, switching desktops. If we come over here to the left, you've got minimize all windows. You've got Dolphin. Let's go ahead and open that up. And I'm not going to get too in-depth on Dolphin. I would, if it was me, make these a little bigger. Probably go with large and then make that so I can see it a little better. That's just me. you got your usual suspects over here. And of course, your home folders are right here. Go ahead and close out of that. Then it comes with Brave as your main browser. So let's go ahead and open that up. And I do like Brave. It is a good browser. Now I do want to see what are they using for a search engine. 
and it looks like they're using Google as a search engine. So that's something that you can change easily in settings. I'm not going to go in depth on that, but you can see what's going on there. So let's close out of that. Now, do they even have Firefox that comes with it? Firefox. It doesn't seem like they do. And now you come up here. Of course, you got games, card games, tactics, and strategy, and then graphics. You got GIMP right there. Internet, Brave. So it just has the Brave browser, multimedia, Clementine, sound recorder, comes with the LibreOffice suite, add and remove software. Let's take a look at this real quick. Let's see how we get software. And if you're familiar with PayMac, that is what you're going to get here. Now, what I do recommend is that you come over here. Let's click on this. Preferences and third party. It's already got AUR support enabled. And it's got Flatpak support enabled. So if you like using Flatpaks, it's already enabled on here. And then if you are somebody that enjoys using the AUR, that is definitely something that's already here as well. Then you've got use mirrors from. It's set for worldwide. I would leave it on worldwide. And I would refresh those. If you do install it before you start doing any updates or installing any software, go ahead and refresh these mirrors. And the easiest way to get there is right here. Hit those buttons, preferences. And then you've got general, advanced, third party. All those settings are in there. Go ahead and refresh those mirrors. It takes two or three minutes and you're good to go. We'll close out of that. But this is definitely a nice place to come and get great software. Let's look up Krita. See if they got Krita. Go ahead and hit enter. And it shows the official repositories right there. Now, this is one of the things I enjoy about Big Linux. Because if you sometimes run a live version of Manjaro or even other distributions out there, when you go to their little software center and start looking things up, it won't let you look them up. It tells you you've got to install it, then update the software center to be able to see what kind of software you can get. Right here, it's already set up that way. You don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's come back down here. We were on settings. Control center, I've already showed you. Let's look at the big store. They've got their own little store right here. Let's go ahead and open that up. And it looks like it's got natives, AUR, and flat packs that can be listed in here. It's got browsers, email, cloud storage, office suites, PDF editors, graphics. Let's look up office suites. Let's see what kind of choices we got. You've got Libre. You've got Only Office, And you've got SoftMaker Office in here. That's not uh, free, but it's there. And then you do have WPS Office in the AUR. Now, I do like the big store because generally what you get a lot of times on Arch-based distros is just PayMac uh, and Octopi. But you can come over here and it's got a lot of different things for you to choose from. Now, if you just wanted to do a search up here, you could do a search for like Caden Live. Let's go ahead and enter that, see if it pops it up. And it's right here. You've got it. Caden Live, you've got it as an app image, you've got it on the AUR, and you can get it from a flat pack. Look at that. Native, AUR, and flat pack. So you've got several different ways to get software in this distribution, and it's easy to navigate and easy to get around. And then if you come up here, it tells you there's two natives, four in the AUR and one in flat pack. I really like that. So definitely take a look at that if you download Big Linux. Let's go ahead and close out of this. Let's come back down here. We were on settings, you've got system, and I want to go ahead and open the console because I do want to do an HTOP. Let's bring that up and let's go ahead and make it bigger so everybody can see it. And as you can see, I've got four gigabytes issued to this machine. Right now we're using about 1.17 gigs with just the terminal open. That will go down a little bit once you install it. It should hover somewhere between 700 and 900 megabytes. It's not a lot, guys, especially if you if you just have a four gigabyte machine, you can still run big Linux and it still be pretty fast for you. Now, if you start doing some kind of heavy video editing or stuff like that, you may see an issue with it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and we will close that. Come back down here and then you've got utilities and then, of course, you've got your web apps. Now, these right here, once you install the program and you want to add or you want to install web apps, you do. It's got everything from Amazon Music, Yahoo Mail, Netflix, uh, Odyssey, Office 365. And if you want to add and remove web apps, you can click on the first selection up there. And it says right here, no web app added. If you wanted to add one, you could come over here. You could type in something like YouTube.com. And then you could come down here and go with uh, YouTube. 
and I'm probably going to have to put the full URL in. So let's go www.youtube.com, detect name and icon, let it go out there and find it for you. There's the icon, there's your web app icon, go ahead and click add. Now that should add it to your system, and then you can close here, and then if you come over here, you should be able to go to web apps, and there is YouTube right there. That wasn't there previously. Now, you do have web apps for Google, which has got your calendar, classroom, contacts, docs, photos, slides, and it had YouTube and YouTube Music already down here. Now, you don't have to keep these. If you don't want web apps by Google, you can get rid of those and not worry about it, so that's not a big issue because some people, like me, don't like using Google, so those are really easy to get rid of, but I just wanted to point that out to you. And I want to go ahead and see what kind of installer they have. It looks like it's Calamari. So let's go ahead and double click that. And it has Calamari. It's a custom version of Calamari. Now you've got three different ways you can install it. Pattern, performance, compatibility. And it kind of gives you items here that shows you what's different between these. Like your performance, compacts the data, restore points, desist data recording, and works with old partitioning tables. This one doesn't. Now the compatibility does work with old partitioning tables. You're not going to be able to compact the data, restore point, or desist data recording. And then on your pattern, you can compact the data, restore the point, but it's not going to desist data or work with old partitioning tables. So this one's BTRFS, this one's BTRFS, and this one is EXT4. So it kind of gives you different options here, things that you can do. Uh, I love big Linux. If you haven't given a shot, I promise you, go down in the description, click on that link, go download it, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine, you'll be impressed. What do you think? Is it something you might try? Is it something you might take for a test drive? Uh, have you used Big Linux? Is it something you're using now? Please, give me your input. Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month. But that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month, or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.